Scott Spears, and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Scott Spears Now. Today it's our year-end episode, and as we end every year, we go visit with one of my favorite people. He's a many-time guest of this show. He is the world's foremost mentalist, from Johnny Carson to Sally Jesse Raphael to David Letterman. He's been on them all and continues to do it into well into the new millennium. He is the amazing Kreskin. He's going to tell us what's going on in 2014, what you should expect. Going to be a very interesting show. And remember, in May, he was on this program and for the first time announced that Hillary Clinton will run for president in 2016. She hasn't announced it yet, but he made that announcement on this show first. So you got to stay tuned. Who knows what he's going to say today? The amazing Kreskin coming up now. On Scott Spears now. This is Scott Spears, and it's New Year's Eve 2013 here in the world, and every year we like to check in with one of my favorite people. He's a many-time guest to this show. He is the world's foremost mentalist, from Johnny Carson to Merv Griffin to many shows over the years. He's still out there getting it done in 2013. As we head into 2014 with some predictions, we're joined by the amazing Kreskin. Kreskin, how are you New Year's Eve? I am great. I, I can tell you that, uh, as you say, each year uh, things I, I seem to continue in my career, and all I'm being beset with in the past uh, uh, week or two, and I, I have to hear my secretary make sure she says the correct name of the movie Wall Street. What is it called? Wolf and Wall Street. Yes. Do you know? Don't you know? Uh, I was out at Universal's uh, taping some shows that were seen the past couple of days, and it, it reminded me and that the movie that opened. On Thanksgiving Day, you know the one about Wall Street, Wolf and Wall Street is a big controversial movie with, uh, uh, I think Scorsese produced it, but in a, there's a dramatic scene in the movie when guess whose name is brought up? You're looking at that person right now. <laughs> well, so since, it, so it's, it's uh, I can't even forecast the next, the next scenario I'm going to be put in, but thank God I wasn't referred to as a wife beater or a terrorist, Scott. Exactly right. You, your name has definitely become part of American uh, culture, pop culture, and I think that's great. And I thank you again for the Christmas card which you send out every year. Okay, perfect. You're very well. This is going to be an exciting year ahead of us. You know, it's going to be a challenging year for this for this country. And in, in spite of a couple of things that I'm going to relate to you, I don't want to have anyone looking in things that I'm looking at in the at the country uh, in a downing or a downer way because we have survived some of the greatest challenges. And for the young people listening in, they need to think in terms of challenges and borrow a little information from our founding fathers, whether it be Ben Franklin, George Washington, what have you. I'm not living in the past because, believe it or not, it's controversial, but I was not alive at that time. But the truth of the matter is they didn't quite know what the word entitlement was because both Washington and Franklin, and I've read uh, a, a thousand pages of even Churchill, who's not a part of this country, but I think the greatest states from the last century. But the bottom line is freedom is not for free. And it was part of the philosophy of this country that we give something back for the success and the building and the sustaining. And that needs to be kept in mind, which is something, bless his soul, JFK talked about. Absolutely right. I think a lot of people would agree with you, Kreskin. Let's get into it. I know we're on limited time. Very busy day for you. What are What's going to happen in 2014, United States well, of America? My first, my first, Scott, my first prediction and I put my head to my, to my hand like this and, and chagrin us. I, this is a prediction I'd like to create because I, I, we have to have some humor and look at things in some way. I'd like to predict, and I think some entrepreneur, because the entrepreneurs that have saved the country, and I've read over a thousand biographies in my life, and that have really made some of the great, greatest changes and advancements. 
I'd like to see the day that we're going to have earplugs offered in movie theaters. And the reason I say this is my life is spent reading people's thoughts, appearing in theaters, concert halls, private bookings, uh, homes of, uh, of uh, CEOs and what have you for performances. And movies are getting damn loud and noisy. I don't want to talk about the last Superman uh, movie, but if you had a hearing deficiency, it was either cured or, t or completely removed because the last hour was so noisy you had to put your fingers in your ear. Now, I understand the movie writing has diminished so greatly and has become so poor in many stories that to fill two hours or what have you, the last 45 minutes is often violent explosion, person banging in the buildings and what have you. So let's just say uh, with a slight tongue in cheek, the sale of earplugs in the movie theaters. But I'll tell you, on the, on the serious side, let's look at a, a situation which has been around the corner and has beset precedents in recent years as, as far back as Kennedy. Uh, here in, in Cuba, I have a, I'm not predicting anyone's demise, but when Paul Castro, who is the brother of Fidel Castro, when he passes away, you will see communism disappear within a couple of weeks in that country. Mm, that's a very, very big prediction. Do you feel that will happen in 2014? I, I, I never, Eric, I never, uh, uh, Scott, I'm, I'm sorry, I, was, I, was, I mentioned something to you by the name of Eric about some other prediction, but Scott, I never, I never talk about a person's uh, well-being or, or delve into their, their health and, and discuss a person's life or death. But the country is really, the, the fabric and the state of mind of the country is overdue for an excuse to move on. And I think that uh, with this final figure that overshadow that it's now in the place of Castro, it's going to happen. You know, we have to realize something which the American public does not know about. But I've worked with law enforcement for as many years and have worked on 84 crime cases, of which I think I've only been helpful in about a third. But years ago, Early in my career, the drugs in this country were entering through Lake Apatcon, New Jersey, and some one of the uh, some of the river areas outside of New York that touched New Jersey. That's where most drugs were came in, coming in, and it was the great ambition, the great ambition, some 30, 40 years ago of Fidel Castro, that this country be filled with, with drugs that drugs would be sold everywhere and legalized as much as possible because he forced something that a lot of people don't realize. It can tend to weaken the culture of a country. Mm -hmm. Keep that in mind, folks. Creskin, you said you had another big prediction for 2014. What is it? Well, let me just say something. Uh, I want to talk to all of you who are watching me and issue an alert. We know this is the case because you hear it down the street, you hear it next door, you hear it across the street. But a great crisis is approaching our country, part of our culture, and it's going to affect our economy. And that is the wave of crime. Now, I know certainly those of us in show business and sports and the public eye have gone in the, the direction of security and what have you. But let me tell you something that security people will not tell you about. And you better know about this, folks. And this is, I'm not a know-it-all, but I spend too much time with people who are victims and also sensing what is going on. Today, most of the robberies, of which I don't know how many, a dozen or so, take place every minute in a home in the United States, at least five, six, every minute of, every, of, of the day. They're done during the daytime. And there's a new pattern which you don't see about in television. It involves more than one person, usually two or three people. Now, let's say you have security in your home. Well, folks, you better wake up the people who put it in there and the townspeople. Many towns have ordinances. And if an alarm goes off, it should not be loud enough so it's heard in the neighborhood. Those townspeople are aiding organized crime, and they're helping organized crime. Because when this country was once a family, where everyone knew the people in the city block, if Joey down the street, a little kid was in trouble or hurt himself, everyone in the block knew and got out, someone got out and helped. Therefore, if an alarm went off, because you have children, you have family, you became alerted, one to get to the police as fast as the person who's calling from 
on the alarm company. Well, let me tell you something about the alarms. And you need to know this because this is crisis information. Today, the philosophy is, if you have a heavy alarm system, you're a celebrity or a person just in business or has their house set up and your house is broken into the daytime and the alarm goes off, the criminals do not leave. They ransack the house for eight and one half minutes and then leave because they know that the police cannot get to the house in any faster amount of time. I've given something to the viewers I think is very important for them to be aware of. Now I got one, one major thing to talk about that deals with show business and the NFL players and what have you, but also it is affecting us today. Some of the interviewers have asked me, you know, from Lindsay Lohan to all the, uh, the people. And, and, and Mario, my, my picture here has gotten dark, but I think everything is... Can you still see me, Scott? Are we're, you all right there? We're good. We're good. Okay? Good. good. Uh, that's fine. Scott, I, I want to tell you, with so many of them on drugs, and I had about a dozen on one, one interview show I did, uh, let me tell you my, my warning to them and to the NFL players who we know when they leave, when they leave the game and retire, about a fifth of them within a few years end up penniless, partly because of drugs, partly because their money wasn't handled properly. Let's talk about the drugs and the entertainers and then think about people around us. You entertainers, I'd be willing to sit down and talk to you. Yeah, all you, all you guys and gals, we see your list. Now it's the 12 of you, 14, that have been going into drug rehab. Oh yeah. Those plush buildings, those expensive places, you may have a, a riding range as you're being treated for your drug problem. B.S. If you folks knew in the United States the success of drug rehabs in, in the United States today, it is one of the greatest hidden scandals. It is not much above 0%. Did you hear me? Not much about 0%. Oh, by the way, you folks undergoing drug therapy in the show business, because I'm in show business. I don't mean this negatively. I hope it works for you. I really pray it works. It won't. The likelihood it will, will not work because when you leave, you're leaving the plushness and you're going back to the setting and the lifestyle and the people who helped you continue your drug process because it never was done quite alone. That we in society today need to understand. Certainly, certainly, I think a very important uh, issue, Chris. And uh, in the few minutes we have left here as we head into 2014, I do want to throw some things at you in a rapid fire fashion because last time you were on the program, I I'm sure you will remember this, you said for the first time that Hillary Clinton will run for president. I said it on your, I said it on your program. Yeah, first. By the way, yours was the, I was asked by it many other times after that, but yes, on that that date in May, it was the first time, and there was a lot of doubt because of other factors. We won't go into it now, but uh, let's let's face it, she's she's a tremendous contender now. I'm not I'm not saying my position one way. I don't mean it that way. I've been with her, and she's a remarkable per in person. Uh, as I said when I spoke to you the last time, and said that she would run for office, she really does have a very strong charisma. Now, whether we talk about today's president or, or her or future potentials, that doesn't necessarily mean that they will be successful practicing in office. But she's going to be a very powerful contender, and yes, she will run. Let me uh, say this uh, then, Kreskin. On the other side, we have Jeb Bush, Chris Christie. Are they going to run? Well, I want to tell you something. I'm, I'm from New Jersey, and... I, I, I'm impressed with uh, with uh, Governor Christie. I'm not talking about his position in handling uh, certain issues or what have you, but he's a dynamic uh, gentleman. He says it like it is. And I was invited to a private uh, party, uh, uh, not, not a private, a private appearance of his here in this area a month, a month or so ago. And the picture, if you people go on my line, is we're laughing and almost hugging. And the, the, the bottom line it says on it is, I told you so. I did uh, foresee that he would win uh, the, the governorship and so forth. I think he's a very, very viable person today. And I think that the spirit that he shows is he just doesn't play games and double talk. He just says it like it is, which, of course, makes friends and makes enemy at the same time. But, yes, he's going to be a very strong. And, you know, we have to understand something. And let's not, let's not uh, belabor this factor. I wish... I hope our young people 
who are, in my opinion, the only people that are going to save this country, and some will come along. I can't pick someone right now in Congress, United States Senate. And I'm not knocking everybody in Congress, the United States Senate. Don't anyone feel I have any prejudice? I wish that most of them had been on the Titanic. But aside from that, <laughs> someone's going to come along and it would be great if we learn from the people of Canada and the people of England that a campaign was only to last a month or two months. That was the extent of the campaign. And money... Not too many years ago, not when I was growing up, but not too many years ago, if a tremendous amount of money out of nowhere from a company came into a contender's coffers here in the United States, that would be something worthy of investigation legally. Today, you can have millions spent, given to one person by a company or individuals. So today you can now buy, you can now buy the position you're running for. Our founding fathers, Ben Franklin and Washington, would be turning over in their grave at this disgraceful condition. It certainly is different than, than what it should be. But will Chris Christie and Jeb Bush throw their hat in as you feel Hillary will? Yes. Both Christie of them. Will. Both of them. Okay. Um, Chris, let's just say Chris Christie will. Chris Christie will. Not sure about Jeb Bush. I'm not sure. Okay. You, you, you know, and you gotta, and you, you gotta ask me that clearly because what do you think of a mind reader? But no, <laughs> I, I can't say. Uh, uh, a lot. <laughs> I, I, I understand. Coming up in uh, February, we've got an event uh, that has made a lot of people nervous. It is the Winter Olympics uh, over in Russia. Oh, What's going to happen there? Is everything going to be safe? Well, you hit a you hit a tender point with me because uh, not too many years ago. I was scheduled to tour all of Russia, and uh, uh, a, one of the person who booked the tours of Russia came to see me perform a, in, uh, in another part of the country, and it was very exciting because I was I was the first person in history since Stalin's era in my field that would have been allowed to tour that country. Stalin allowed allowed only one other person whom he met met him when he was in power and he allowed to perform. Uh, I That Christmas Eve here at my house, when I had friends for a party, my, my secretary said, thank God, Kreskin, you've just been blessed by timing. Just a few days before I was to leave, the government of Russia collapsed. And like some CBS correspondents, had I left earlier, I would have been in some town unable to communicate with the Western world and maybe stuck there for many, many weeks. That's how pressures like that can can really throttle the Pete Westerners. And I worry, I very, very seriously worry about the Olympic people attending the Olympics, people tra traveling there by train and what other means, because the terrorists have become like kamikaze pilots that I knew about when I was a kid, when Japan was part of the Axis powers. They are willing to blow up anything on the way to anywhere. This is going to be a very traumatic and trying time. Mm -hmm. is, does that is feel it, definite as we head into the Olympics? Is that is it a well, possibility? I, I, I would only say this for myself. If I were attending the Olympics, I would still go, but I would have massive more security than I never dreamt of having to protect myself. And I mean that sincerely. This is not games that are being played. When you have a value of life willing to be used as a political pawn, then you got something to contend with, which we here in the United States are not used to. We're used to all kinds of weapons, but we're really not used to a human being used as a weapon. And until it happens in this country, and it will, and it will take place, we don't fully no, understand. And you know what? In the spirit of broadcasting, and you do an excellent job, and you, uh, I enjoy, I enjoy talking with you. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, in about uh, a month, you want to touch base with me because I have something very exciting and dramatic to announce that I can't talk about now. But let's just say, regarding the uh, coming year with the 14 on it, we're going to make it a special year. Each person their own, own way, and I'm not going to say goodbye to you. But in the spirit of broadcasting. Let's just say, to be continued. To be continued. Care, the amazing Kreskin, Happy New Year, and we will talk again soon. Thank you, Kreskin.
great. Bye-bye. I sure hope you enjoyed this visit with the amazing Kreskin. Always one of my favorite people. Can you believe? Could Cuba and the United States' relationship be getting better? Will something happen at the Olympics just a few short weeks away? I certainly hope not. Chris Christie? Kreskin says he's going to run. We flipped to the other side of the aisle and got their choice. Holy mackerel. And be careful, be careful, be careful. That eight and a half minute rule from the time the siren goes off till the cop gets to your home. you got to be aware of that. So much to talk about with the amazing Greskin. But for this episode of Scott Spears Now and for this year, 2013, I say make it a great 2014. We'll be back with you in 2014 with all kinds of great programming. Remember to check us out on the Internet. Scott Spears Now, just go to Facebook, type that in, and like us, and you can get all the up-to-date information. Happy New Year. Enjoy. See you next year. Scott Spears heading for the dugout.